This is Mari Robson of Love Lulu Creative, and this is episode number 47. I just got off the most amazing Zoom call from California to just outside of London with the most charming soul on this planet, Jen Jardim. We had such a fun conversation. I just really know you guys are going to like this. She's absolutely adorable. And it doesn't surprise me because I really fell in love with her work on Instagram. Jen is a stop motion paper animator. And it's just something that a space that I'm interested in getting into myself just to express my artwork on a different um, with a different medium and that's how I came across her Instagram and just really fell in love with her work so she was super generous and sharing how she has gotten into this and and where she's taking it and what her her plans are and she has a new website it's called the animated blogger and it will be linked in the show notes so make sure to check her out she's also I believe changing her handle to the animated blogger on Instagram but all the ways that you can find her, you can either find that over on my uh, website, Mari Robeson Home, or you can find it in the show notes. Uh, so <laughs> pour yourself a cup of English tea and get yourself a biscuit and just enjoy this episode with the very talented Jen Jardim. Hi, Jen. Thank you so much for joining me today. This is really a, a technical feat that I can talk to you from California to outside of London. <laughs> so thank you for um, staying up late to, to chat with me this evening. No, well, thank you so much for having me. It's, uh, yeah, it's great to chat. And I just adore your, your voice. I think you should add that to your animations. <laughs> <laughs> I, I do sometimes. And then I listen to it back and I think, oh gosh, I sound terrible. So oh, I always sort of alter God. it. <laughs> I feel so boring in California. And, and I'm like, oh, not at all. So no, that's, that's positively <laughs> exotic to me. <laughs> that's, that's funny, Jen. <laughs> Um, okay, so first of all, let's talk about your name. I just asked you about this, just so everybody knows where to find you. It's it's Jen Jardim, but I found you on Instagram, and it and Jardim was taken. You said so. It's um, Jen. Is it underscore Jardim? Um, yes, but from well, from next week, it's going to be the animated blogger. So, um, but yeah, I'm going to sort of try and keep it consistent across all my platforms, so it's easy. It's easy for people to find me. Okay, so that's where people can find you as um, the animated blogger. So yeah. I found you because I was um, kind of looking around um, for paper animations. That's, that's how I discovered you. But what would you say, what do you call what it is that you do? Um, well, I, I've been trying to yeah, figure out the best way of putting it. I mean, if I'm being short about it, I just say, oh, I'm stop motion animator, um, which I am. But then I do like to clarify that it is mainly paper that I work with. Um, I don't do claymation or little figures or anything like that. So it is all 2D and I like to draw everything in 2D and then bring it to life by creating lots and lots of drawings to sort of make it look like they're they're moving or changing angles um right like so, that. so I, that's what was really interesting for me because i could not find many people that do what you do even like i was on pinterest and um or maybe there are a lot of people that do but you're doing it really beautifully and i that's why i was so excited when you said you would talk with me about this oh so thank you so I, much i mean there doesn't seem to be that many people that, that do yeah. it actually. Um, okay. That did worry me to start with because I thought, oh, well, if it's such a great idea, why, <laughs> why, <laughs> why aren't other people doing it? Until um, you make your first animation and you realize, oh, that's why. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it is terribly time consuming. Right. So I think maybe that's why a lot of people just don't go for it. And I think a lot, uh, I think a lot of people who are maybe studying it at a younger age are finding out that they can do things very quickly on on computers so they don't actually have to sit down and and, and draw with a pen and paper um but i actually like that i like spending hours in my studio fiddling around with tiny bits of paper i find it quite relaxing actually okay we are we are of the same we're of the same uh 
whatever makeup <laughs> the, right word. the same cloth I don't like the right word. but okay I cannot wait to get into that because I have all kinds of thoughts on that but that's interesting that you say that um I want to start first of all with where you're located because um the lovely voice you're you're outside of London we're, we're about outside of London we are so we're about a 50 minute drive outside of London um which is is lovely actually we we did live in London um, and then we moved out, oh, when did we buy the house? Four years ago. Um, it's nice. So my, my husband drives into London every day for work, um, but we're in the countryside. So the children have lots of green spaces to run around and I can go on log, dog walks. Um, so, it, it, you know, where we are now is lovely. We've got the best of both worlds, actually. So, yeah, I feel very lucky. <sighs> It, it sounds so charming. Um, so did you, is that where you, you grew up and you're, you're from there? No, no, I'm from Wales, actually. Oh. Um, yes, yeah, I, mo I moved to London when I was 18 um, to be a model. And then I travelled around a lot, um, sort of skipping around lots of different countries and, and travelling a lot for many years. And then always returned to London uh, and set settled in London. What type of modeling did you do? A uh, fashion model. Um, so some catwalk, mostly magazine, uh, some sort of billboard campaigns, things like that. But we, we are going back a very, very long time. What a fun world to be in. I mean, just a super creative to, to be in that field as well. It was great. Uh, yeah, absolutely loved it. I mean, I, before I started modeling, I'd never been on a plane before. Um, so it, it really, it you know it changed my life and i met so many great people um yeah it was it was a wonderful time in my life wow i love when um fashion and art play off each other and it, it, you seem to see more and more of that lately which is really really cool definitely um, yeah i think there's definitely a crossover yeah yeah so after modeling what did you do um so i sort of uh flitted around for a little while um and then ended up working in, in tattoo studios of, of all places. Um, I suppose I sort of went, I went a bit crazy. I dyed my, my blonde hair black and I chopped it into a Uma Thurman, uh, Thurman Pulp Fiction style okay, <laughs> bob with it. a very harsh fringe. And I got lots of tattoos and I pierced my septum and my lip. And <laughs> um, I sort of, I suppose had my had my sort of late teens in my sort of you know in my uh, in my later years I suppose. Well, I just dyed my hair pink, so I I guess I'm really. Ah. <laughs> so I love it. That sounds awesome. So that's where you met. I'd, I'd never. Oh, sorry. I was, I'd never been able to do that before. Um, you know, being a model, I had to keep my hair sort of right. the same as, as my book. So, you know, it, I'd never sort of had the freedom to be able to, to do that. So yeah, it was, um, it was fun. Oh, I bet. I bet. It is fun hair Again, more stuff to be creative with is hair. And yes. <laughs> stuff, I love it. It's all art. It's just great. It's wonderful. So, so that's where you met your husband then. Is that yes, that's right. Yeah, so he's a tattooist. Um, I never got into tattooing myself. Um, I think the pressure of actually creating something on somebody's skin that was <laughs> <I know>. entirely <laughs> permanent. Um, <laughs> right, right. I don't think my nerves, no, my nerves couldn't take it. Um, piercing, I, I enjoyed actually. Um, and it was, yeah, it was, it was great fun. Um, and then, yeah, we got married and uh, I already had a daughter. Um, so she's now 20, well, nearly 21. She'll be 21 in a few weeks. Um, and then we, we had two more children, two more, two more daughters. So now we've got small ones as well as a, a big one. Oh, I don't know how you do it. My, I have three daughters too, but they're, they're all in college. <laughs> I couldn't imagine having a little one right now on top of it. <laughs> um, okay, so that's amazing that's already quite amazing so then you're saying to me that you just recently got into doing the stop motion animation and i, I you have a really polished instagram page so i was really Thank surprised you. to hear that you were just recently into it and i was really um I, I, there was a couple of things about the page that were so interesting to me like how you reverse out the steps 
So when you're scrolling through it, you are first seeing what you're going to see as you're scrolling through it as mm. opposed to the other way around, you know? Yes. So, well, I try, I try, I always post the video first and then, I mean, I don't know. I've, I've been sort of trying to, to read about how you're supposed to do social media and all these algorithms and things like that. <laughs> and it makes my head spin. I mean, I I, the first time I posted a story, I had to call my daughter at university and say, what do I press? I don't understand. Exactly. Um, Thank but, God we have them. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, so I'm not, I'm not entirely sure if what I'm doing is entirely sort of correct. Sorry, there's a cat jumped right on there. <laughs> We've got five of them and they're everywhere. <laughs> Um, so I'm not sure what I'm doing is entirely correct. Um, I, I post my sort of middle title uh, and then I, I like to post the details as well, just to show that actually it is paper. And, and sometimes it, I feel like it moves so fast that you might sort of miss some of the, the tiny little details. Um, so I, I, I don't uh, know. Sort it's, of really, it's brilliant. I, I wouldn't really change it because if you're going scrolling through first you see like the paper then you see what the story is going to be about and then you see the animation hmm. as opposed to yeah the other way around which i the other it, way around it makes it more fun to scroll through and you're like oh what's coming what's coming you know so yeah i'm nice i think i wanted it easy to i mean i i really enjoy organization and order and i wanted that to sort of reflect so it, i sort of I, I i suppose i laid it out as I want to see it and I hope that others appreciate it as well. Brilliant. It's, it, I appreciate it. <laughs> I think it's great. Thank you. <laughs> and, okay. So this is what I really love. I love when I ever see any kind of art that's clever, that makes me kind of like smile or there's something kind of just, you know, that makes you kind of laugh a little bit, whether it's a logo mm -hmm. design or a painting, but these little animations are, are just so great. I love how you, come up with these these really quick little snippets of a story that make you smile so mm. i want to know like where you get your inspiration for this so you you just wait a second let me backtrack when why did you just decide i'm just going to pick up some scissors and some papers start drawing and, and create these things what what well, was the this? where did it begin i mean I, I think i was looking i didn't realize it but i think i've been looking for a, a creative outlet for a while i would always draw birthday cards and Christmas cards and I'd even draw little you know things on the wrapping paper and fold the wrapping paper to try and sort of turn it into little bears and and, and things like that and, and and these things were fun but they were just little side projects and they weren't really anything I was I was you know particularly into um, and then one day I'd drawn a birthday card with a, with a sheep on it and I was sort of doodling trying to sort of make it look like it was bouncing and I started to wonder Oh, if I cut it out, I wonder if I could animate it to look like it's bouncing. So I tried it and then I drew some more sheep in various stages of bounce, you know, with flattened fur at the bottom. And, and uh, yeah, my first animation was born. Um, that one's still up on my Instagram, actually. That's, that's, that's the first one there. And, you know, even though it's quite different to what I do now, I like to include my hands in there now to sort of add another I know. I have interactive element, um, <laughs> which is fun. Sometimes I wonder why I, I sort of get cramp in my hand from having to hold it up in a strange position for hours. Um, but I, yeah, I, I enjoy the interactive um, part of that, I think. Uh, I, I'm having a hard time keeping up with all my thoughts that I want to ask you because that was what I wanted to ask you is your hands. And that's, that's the one thing I found that was so, um, it just added one extra texture, one other level to it that mm. really added the interest um, to it. And I, but how do you shoot it? So technically, how do you shoot two hands? I mean, how are you shooting that? Do you have a timer? So yeah, so that that was that was a, a revelation to me when I discovered the timer. I thought, ah, right, okay. Um, usually, if I've got one hand in, then I can just press. I can press the shutter. My camera is mounted above, so my uh, my camera doesn't actually get touched now during the process, um, which makes my videos a lot more steady. Um, as I've gone on, I've just discovered all these sort of little 
tricks to make to making it better so when i was first doing it i was just doing it on an app on my phone and i was pressing it every time and every time i'd press the shutter it would sort of move a little bit and and you know trial and error i figured out that actually i needed some sort of remote uh system for, for pressing the button um so yeah so if i've got my one hand in that's easy i can just click 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 if it's two hands i've got to set up a timer i usually set it for about 10 seconds and then i'm rushing in between takes to try and move my hands and grab various little bits of paper um yes it's 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 fun <laughs> But therein lies why there's not that many people doing it because I know what I it's a faff. I, it's an absolute faff. Yeah, and I, I do yeah. wonder sometimes halfway through, why am I doing this? <laughs> <laughs> but then I finish it and I watch it back and I'm, oh, actually, that really worked. And and yeah, I think I think that's the bit that, that keeps me going is I have this idea in my head of what I want it to look like. And then once I finish shooting it, I watch it back and, and it does look like I hoped it would and, and that makes me really happy mm -hmm. yeah there's something quite satisfying about it when you see it all linked together and it, it tells the little story it's yeah it's really great definitely. really great sometimes it doesn't turn out like I hoped and <laughs> and then and then I've wasted three hours or however long it's taken that's also uh quite frustrating I sharing that too because like I know I started playing around with the idea of it and I I started with animating a little doll and it was like I made three of those dolls and I still don't like the one that I made but I finally figured yeah. out how to make it to animate it you know it's like this is very time consuming do I really want to do this yes it is yes it's I think that it would probably if I had to describe uh stop motion animation uh, you know in one sentence it would be time consuming uh -huh. <laughs> Yeah, and I really, uh, I, I personally, going back to drawing, talking about like the hand-drawn um, pieces of paper, mm. there's something just so, um, I just really love that so much. I mean, we have so many tools now to do everything. We can do it in Procreate or we can do it in Photoshop or, or Adobe Animate or something, but there's just something about that organic feel of a piece of paper that has this I don't know what it taps into this part of you that kind of reminds you of when you're a little kid or something playing with paper dolls and absolutely arts and crafts and getting messy with glue sticks and right. you know not being afraid to, to create something and and have it look sort of rustic almost i suppose you know in, in today's age of everything looking super shiny and polished i suppose you know it's it's sort of it's rustic looking almost but, and it makes it more unique and special for some reason. I can't really quite put my finger on why I'm just so attracted to that more than I would be to um, something drawn on a animated on a computer. I mean, I love that mm. too. Obviously, I can appreciate that, but um, I don't know. Maybe I just know that. Maybe it's because I illustrate that I appreciate it so much. I'm not, I'm not quite sure what what it is, but yeah. But, um, I can't believe that you're not trained in this because your your illustrating skills are excellent. No, no, I've never, um, no, I've never trained in, in art or anything like that. Um, uh, and I suppose to start with, you know, I didn't like to say like, oh, I'm self-taught, uh, you know, and now I've sort of, I've had to sort of remind myself, that actually, it's nothing to be ashamed of. Self-taught is, is not a bad thing. Um, you know, of course, if you can, if you can get an education in a subject that you're passionate about, um you know that's brilliant um you can never know too much but if you're in a place in your life where you're not in a position to go and, and learn formally it doesn't mean you can't go ahead and pursue something you're interested in and, and try different things at home and you know you, you might surprise yourself like i did and, and figure out oh actually i can do it this way and and you know you learn you learn things along the way 100 percent i and and god bless youtube for it because there's so many things that you can just google how to do something and then you can kind of put it your your own spin on it and, and make it mm -hmm. what it is and i think that that's what we're always doing as artists we're always evolving we're always like looking for the next um way we can improve something or expand a thought of what we're creating so absolutely um, yeah yeah and i love like for, i'm like at the beginning of stages of this and it's totally challenging and i love that part of it i love that i don't know about this 
and I can like dig into something and kind of, you know, figure it out. It's that's kind of the, and you can part. make it your own as well, because you're, as you're figuring out by yourself, you can, you can make it your own. You can make it what you want it to be, which I think is, you know, is really exciting, especially with art. Right. And you know, nowadays, I mean, every tool exists, like you can do anything you want to do with your art. It, all those, the animation, all of those things exist any way, shape or form that you want to do it. But it, it still comes down to you have to create it. You have to be. Yeah, oh, absolutely. It's about ideas. Uh, you have you to know. have the idea, yeah. right? And it's like, I mean, you can learn the technical yeah. aspect of anything, but to, to actually create it is a whole nother, <laughs> you know, that's what's going to set yes. you apart. You know, that's what makes you look so different and why you, you stood out to me. So I do want to ask you about that because um, they're so clever. You, they're this, like these very short little animations. And like the one that jumps into mind is your, the little pencil one where it's, misbehaving and then it behaves at the end <laughs> what do you call that one I that one was was born out of absolute frustration that uh i just couldn't i i'd had a block i mean the the children had been home for six months from right. from school you know due to the lockdown and i i'm i'm the sort of a person i'm quite i'm quite social um, but in short bursts and I need a lot of alone time to be able to function, um, which with, with children is, is great. <laughs> um, so, you know, I, I, I sort of need quiet time to be able to process my thoughts about my art and, and, you know, my, my ideas are always quite chaotic to start with until I work through them. Um, so I just, I got to the point where I just, I couldn't have even a full thought um i just it just wasn't happening um and then that that animation came to me um so yeah it was basically just sharing how i was feeling and i think actually how a lot of people were feeling um at, at the time as well a lot of artists sort of contacted me afterwards and said i'm feeling exactly the same i've just hit a wall like i you know i can't i can't muster sort of ideas at the moment <laughs> you couldn't muster ideas, but I thought that was one of the most brilliant ones. I was like, wow, that is so clever and just so fun. I just enjoyed Aww. it so much. It was really cute. Oh, and you could tell you're a mom by the way that you even did it with like your tapping of your finger. <laughs> so, <laughs> so cute. I loved it. So, so I also saw that you had some, you collabor did a collaboration for um, World Music Day. So yes, that, I did. That was that was brilliant, actually. Um, How did that come about for you? So just, I mean, lots of other artists that I've connected with on Instagram. Um, I can't, uh, I, I can't actually remember who who initially thought of the idea. Um, but a, a message or a group was set up, and a message was sent around. Um, oh, hey, you know, we've we've got this idea. Um, you know, do you want to be part of it? And initially I thought, oh, who me? Um, <laughs> you know, all the other artists had, had big followings and, and, you know, very polished videos and, and were, you know, very amazing at what they did. And, and there's me sort of just starting out and not really sure about, you know, what I'm doing. And even if I'm allowed to call myself an artist yet, um, but I, I said yes, and I was actually really happy with my with my section of the um, the contribution. So yeah, I was yeah. yeah. It actually it worked out. It worked out really well, and it was it was actually so nice just to talk to some other stop motion artists, and I'm still in contact with them now. And yeah, it's great. It's it's it was really again. I I applied. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> that's so good. I just got like, I went down the rabbit hole on your Instagram feed. I was just like looking at all these. I'm like, this is so fun. <laughs> it was just, it's so nice. And I think that's what, um, I, I don't know, you know, Instagram has inter introduced the reels thing and then like, they'll just flood your feed with reels. And I started to get kind of yeah. dizzy looking at that. It's like, wait, wait, I just want a plain picture. <laughs> I, tr I tried one and then I, I just, I gave up and I think, yeah, even though I feel like part of me feels like I have to keep up with the times with Instagram and rolling out all these new features. And then part of me thinks, well, I'm not going to do stuff 
just because I feel like I should be doing it. And it, it, it yeah, so I'm, I'm not on board with the reels at the moment. <laughs> I like some aspects of it because it can allow you to do certain things. I've been kind of playing with it a little bit, but I, mm. but you're already basically doing what they want you to do is create a video that makes people stay on their platform longer. And, yeah. You know, I mean, you're yeah. already doing it. So you're, you're doing that by, but you're just painstakingly doing it. <laughs> <laughs> so, so what do you see? So you're starting a new website. It's called the animated blogger. And yeah. What, what's your vision for that? Like, what are you thinking that you want to do with that? Well, um, I, ha I had the idea. Um, I, I suppose it was two things that, that ended up colliding that finally made me do it. Um, firstly, as well as my love for animating, um, I also have a bit of an obsession with fragrance and skincare and bath products and I'm obsessed with trying these things and then I make notes and I like cataloging them into different lists and you know I'm always telling friends oh hey I you know I tried this perfume it smells exactly like strawberry milkshake you've got to try it or you know I'm putting squirts of face cream in little pots for my friends to try um I suppose I wanted to share what I'm finding on a wider scale for a while, but I didn't have any idea about how to go about it or what, what sort of platform I'd even share that on. Um, and I think the thing that finally pushed me to do it was that recently I've been animating more products. So um, I don't know if you saw the perfume yeah. bottles that I did. Yeah, spraying out little paper cutouts of, you know, holiday scents, so little beach balls and pineapples and palm leaves. Yeah. Um, and, and since that, a few companies had approached me to make animations, um, you know, with their products. And yeah. I just realized I really love incorporating products that interest me into animations and, and bring them to life in a new way that, you know, I just realized that I really enjoy doing this. Um, and I thought, well, I can do more of it. Um, you know, all these products I've been collecting, I can... I can share about them, but in a way that's unique to me. Um, so I can, I can write blog posts on them and I can, I'm planning on drawing them. So I'm going to draw every item. So it'll be a, it'll be a, a sort of a, I mean, a beauty and fragrance blog, I suppose. Um, but unlike any other one, I'm not going to have any pictures of the actual product. Um, I'm not sure how, <laughs> I'm not sure how popular that will be, but I'm hoping that my illustrations will, uh, be charming enough to, to, to keep people interested. Um, and then I'm going to incorporate what I'm writing about into, um, cute little animations. So yeah, I'm ho I'm hoping that, um, my idea, um, will work and isn't silly. Um, it's, it's something that I want to, I want to try definitely. Mm. Well, I think it's great. It's, so original is so authentic to you that it's going to take off it's going to be great it's going to do thank whatever. you i I, yeah. I hope so um i can't wait this, to see it it's going to be really cool mm -hmm. i mean this this week i've just been absolutely consumed with with setting up this blog um and I'm quite inept at technology, so it's it's been a huge and steep, fast I learning think we'll curve. Have to stop saying that because anybody who can figure out how to do a stop motion animation is not inept at technology. Well, <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm pretty good with technology, actually, and I'm struggling with that. So I think it's the other way around. I think you're the wizard. <laughs> Um, for the just, well, just for that, maybe nothing, nothing else. <laughs> <laughs> so, do you have a separate space? I mean, you have your children, and you have your five cats, and your chameleon. <laughs> like, do you have a separate space where you set up and do your animations? Yes, I do. Uh, I do. I, 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 I didn't when when I when I first started out. Um, I, I kept all of my paper and all my pens in a, in a plastic box that got slid under the bed um, and then when I wanted to uh, create something I would lug out the plastic box, uh, carry it downstairs and plonk it on the kitchen table. Um, when I was shooting uh, it was just in the bedroom with the curtains drawn and I had two desk lamps and that, that you know that worked for a while, that was fine. Um, but it got to a stage where 
I, I need, you know, if I thought, right, if I'm actually going to do this, I need a, a proper space. Um, so we've remodeled one of the, the rooms downstairs. Um, I, I mean, I say room, it's, it's practically a cupboard, um, but it's absolutely perfect for what I need. Nice. Uh, I've blocked off the window so no natural light comes in. I've got two, two giant lights at the side and I've got a mount for my camera above. Um, and it's just wonderful now to have a space that's just mine that, you know, I can, I can do all my drawing and my animating and, and my writing and I can leave it really messy if I want and I don't have to tidy it away at the end of the day. That, you know, that's definitely helped my work process. So just so that people that are listening that here, like you said, you blocked off the windows, it's, it's better mm. that there's just a, a secure light that doesn't change, like window light. Yes, yes. Na natural light is absolutely the enemy of, of stop motion. Um, you don't notice the light changing or anything like that. But, you know, if, if you think if you're taking three hours to shoot something, or even if you're shooting something within... 10 minutes the light never stays consistent um, and because you're then playing it back at such a fast rate you don't get the gradual change in light as you do uh naturally you get this really awful very fast flickering which you know ultimately just distracts from what you're trying to show and i mean in in my earlier videos which are you know some most of them are still up um you, you, there's some and they're terribly flickery and they're awful um but it was a process and you know i figured out i figured out why it was doing that um yeah mm -hmm. so so now that you you've committed yourself to um diving into creating a website and and you have a very great grasp on the concept of what you're what you're going to be doing is this going to become like a I'm going to get up and I'm going to do this every day or like how, how much time are you, is this your full-time gig that you're going to be working on or? Yes. I mean, I have fully committed to this now. Um, the children are back in school. So, oh. you know, between, between the hours of about 10 past nine and 10 past three, um, I have, I have time to solely dedicate to this. Um, so yeah, I'm going to try, I'm going to try and, and, you know, really put myself, you know, in there and, and really sort of do the best that I can do with it. Are you planning and like scheduling out, like I'm going to be doing two animations a month or like, is that, what's it, what's a typical day going to look like for you? Doing well, that? I've, I'm, I've sort of, I've sort of tried to write like a little schedule for myself. Um, just i mean i roughly know how long things take me obviously with the inclusion of a blog now i think you know it's going to take a bit longer so i'm hoping one day i'm going to sort of do all the research for for an article i want to write um then the next day i'll do all of the the drawing that i need to do for that particular article um and then sort of planning out a storyline for an animation that will go with it um, and then the actual animating that is you know that is a a time suck um, you know sometimes I'll, I'll shoot and it'll take me all day and it just doesn't turn out right so then I have to reshoot um, you know it doesn't always doesn't always go your way um, so you know I think pretty much with my plans I've pretty much got a full week uh, <laughs> plan <laughs> <laughs> but, <laughs> <laughs> in in a month still doing you know mum stuff school runs and, right. and and you know driving well, to swimming lessons and ballet classes and grocery shopping dog walks mm -hmm. <laughs> all of that fun stuff it's a balance <laughs> absolutely <laughs> well and once you get rolling on this i can imagine that you're going to get a lot of um companies are going to be coming to you so then you're going to have to schedule those in as well so yeah i mean i'm ho yeah i'm hoping that you know really i can turn this into a you know a, a proper job um certainly from where i started i feel like it's you know it's it's come a long way um so i'm really excited to see you know where i can take it next and and yeah what i can do with it i pride myself on noticing talented people prior to them becoming famous <laughs> 
<laughs> ah, so you're, you're a lucky charm then. Maybe. I'm putting you in that category of being <laughs> super, uber fabulous and um, very, very busy. Um, but okay, so I just wanted to ask you, before I kind of wrap things up, I wanted to ask you just some of the technical questions that I know some people, if they're, if they're interested in animation, would probably want of to course. know things about like, um, do you shoot this on your iPhone? Or are you using a camera? What kind of software do you use? And those kinds of things. Um, so when I, when I first started, um, I, I, I found a really great piece of advice, actually, which was do what you can with what you have. And mm -hmm. I think, I, like I think sort of, I think that holds a lot of people back. Um, you know, you, you don't begin because you don't have the right camera or you don't have the expensive Copic pens or, you know, you don't have a computer or even a, a workspace. Um, you can always do something and make something, you know, with, with, with what you have. Like, I, you know, like I said, when I started, I didn't have a, a dedicated workspace or, you know, I was, I was shooting from a free app on my iPhone um, that was balanced on a mount that I'd made out of cardboard that I uh, <laughs> duct taped to the ceiling of the bedroom. Um, <laughs> the, the paint peeling off is, is still there. <laughs> <laughs> haven't managed to fix that yet um, so, yeah, so, so basically I, you know I started with a plastic box two desk lamps you know a free app on a three-year-old iPhone and some cardboard and duct tape um, but you know I had ideas and, and and that you know that's what we were saying earlier it's all about the ideas because you can have the best camera you can have the best markers and you can have all the best equipment but if you don't have ideas you don't you don't have anything um right. so yeah so you know yeah when i first started it was it was an iphone and a free app and, and that was it and you can absolutely do great things with that mm -hmm. yeah and now it's like you do have to have the ideas and they need to be your ideas because, yes. <laughs> because everybody can see what everybody's doing so yeah that's also absolutely <laughs> that's a really really wonderful tip of uh advice because it does hold a lot of people back they think they can't get started on something and it's just you know we didn't have these things years ago and we were still absolutely <laughs> i mean animation was around be way before all these fancy computers and apps on our iphones so um there's there's a way to make it happen if there's exactly absolutely and i think you know i think it's about starting before you're ready as well because you know and I think when you're starting out that seems like really scary advice because you don't want to present stuff to the world that you think isn't good enough um, but you can read and you can plan and you can make lists about all this fancy stuff you want to buy but until you actually start you're not going to get anywhere so it's just about finding your style and finding how you work and along the way you might actually realize that that initial list of all this fancy stuff that you wanted you don't actually need and, and you can you know really par it down to you know to the basics of, of what you need to get the job done great advice yeah and what i really really liked about your early your journey so far is that you just picked up something because you were looking for a creative outlet and it was something that was fun and um was you know the creative juices were flowing and you were it made you kind of come alive and you were just doing it and that's when the best things happen or when you're just doing it just to create that you're not worried uh, yeah about what someone's going to think about it or can i sell this or you know what how is this going to be perceived by people because who knows who cares if you're doing it just because it brings you joy and it's making you really happy and it's fulfilling that creative desire that you have then then all kinds of really fun things happen when definitely i mean my aim you know was and, and still is was just to create you know little silly videos that, that make people smile when when they watch them um you know and i think yeah i think if you go out with the aim of of trying to make someone smile you're you're not gonna go wrong i agree <laughs> i absolutely agree with you on that well I, I was gonna ask you if you have any other advice i usually tend to wrap up my show with uh, asking for your advice to your younger self if you've got anything that you extra you want to offer you've already given us so many good oh, things oh gosh to my younger self yeah. um start with the wrinkle cream stay out of the sun <laughs> 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 
Oh. <laughs> Nothing, nothing artistic. No, um, I mean, yeah, I'm, I mean, honestly, like, you know, I'm happy where I am now and I'm excited where it's going. And I think if I hadn't have taken the journey as I've taken it, um, maybe I wouldn't, you know, maybe I, I wouldn't be on the same path. So, um, yeah, I think just, you know, if you find something that makes you happy, um, have a go at it and, and it might take you wonderful places it's really quite that's what it's all about right satisfied where you are and eager to do more that's yes definitely you can't ask for a better life than that absolutely oh <laughs> uh, well thank you jen this was just uh, it's just such a treat you are so charming and i'm i'm so excited and um I'm so excited for your blog and I'll post all of this information in the show notes as well. So people can follow you, the animated blogger. And I'm just really honored and so grateful to have you on today. And thank oh, you, thank you so much. Me. Thank you for having me. It's, yeah, it's been really fun to chat with you. Yay.